from Xinjiang province. Now, for more on this, I'm joined by China analyst Clifford Coonan here in studio, and I'm joined by Anton Pieper. He is a uh, analyst with the World Economy, Ecology, and Development Institute in Berlin. Both of you, welcome. Clifford, I want to start with you. Um, this issue that we've just been talking about with this listing by the customs agency, are we sure that's related to this larger spat about Xinjiang? I think we're pretty, we're pretty certain there's some connection. We're definitely seeing a pattern here. Uh, we've seen how Australia had uh, restrictions put on some of its goods, such as its lobster um, and its wine and its barley, um, in, a, in a similar way by the customs officials. A similar so, spat there between the two countries. Exactly. Over this uh, call, in their case, a call for an uh, investigation of the origins of COVID, mm -hmm. but also uh, it, because it's expressed concern over the situation, the human rights situation in Xinjiang province. Uh, Anton, I want to ask you, um, you know, China has so much leverage against companies because it's such a big market. How difficult does that make your job when you're pursuing ethical sourcing for companies? Well, uh, it makes it more, more difficult, definitely, because uh, what we can see here is a political Chinese reaction, you know, to an atmospheric transformation of world trade. This is uh, a trade measure which comes close to what one could call actually a trade war. You know, Western governments increasingly incline to the pressure of civil society organizations, such as wheat, but also others, and progressive international companies to forge way for due diligence legislation. That is to say, for laws that are in line with international binding human rights standards, such as ILO conventions, or also on a voluntary basis, the OECD guidelines for multinational enterprises. And these standards clearly forbid human rights abuses, such as child labor, which is the case on cotton plantations in Xinjiang. Well, now, Clifford, it's up to companies right now to try and figure out how they want to do it, if they want to appeal to the major market or if they want to try and follow these standards, essentially. Um, how are they navigating? Well, it's a very difficult process for them to navigate that. Until now, um, a lot of people have kind of turned a blind eye to a lot of the things going on in China and just focused on the market. But now we're seeing that this has consequences. Um, for example, we had a case uh, because the US has imposed sanctions and they recently, last month, they blocked a shipment of Uniqlo clothing from the Japanese uh, fast retailing company um, because of they said that it was made by the, the, the in, in Xinjiang by the cotton companies there. So it's a, it's a big problem. Also, 20% of the world's cotton comes from Xinjiang. So there's a lot of um, balancing to be done. A lot of uh, it's, it's going to be it's threading the needle. Exactly. It's a, it's a big question for, for firms now dealing with, with Xinjiang. Uh, now, Anton, you and I talked earlier about this. Uh, you would argue that governments should be providing cover for companies through basically providing the laws that, that force them to make decisions on this or adhere to certain standards. Absolutely. You know, that comes down to the question, question of voluntary versus legally binding measures. You know, I mean, what we are are doing is we, we talk to companies and propose concrete measures how companies can actually implement UN guiding principles and, and, and comply with international human rights standards. Just to give you a, a, a very short example of, of what that could be, for example, um, robust complaint mechanisms. Um, but what we have been witnessing over the past years is the failure of um, voluntary approaches. Like in many voluntary approaches, uh, initiative. All right, I think we're having some technical such issues. Multi stakeholder initiatives, um, they're quite high. All okay, right. can you still hear me? Yeah, we just lost you there for a moment. I want to finish up with one more question to Clifford Anton. I think we got the gist of that answer right there, that a lot of those voluntary measures aren't quite working. Staying with that, until there are laws in place, Clifford, um, you know, is the ball really in China's court here? Because I imagine there are plenty of Chinese consumers who do want some of these major brands. They want to wear Nike. They want to wear Adidas. It's true. I mean, the fact it's such a huge market means that it's, it's a very difficult one to ignore. Um, I, I just trying to work out how things are going to proceed. You know, we saw that the Chinese investment deal um, recently, the EU-China investment deal, sorry, that that's been frozen largely over these kind of concerns due to the sanctions. Um, but China is, st seems to be um, sticking to its guns on this. And um, it's going to be, it basically feels that it has the economic muscle to outweigh these um, political concerns in the West. So we're going to see quite, um, quite some friction over the next few months, I'd say. All right, Clifford Coonan here in studio, Anton Pieper. Thank you both very much.